Hi, my name is Erica Jardine and I'm a physical therapy student at Elon University. I'm here today to talk to you about the article Muscle Changes Following Cycling and or Electrical Stimulation in Pediatric Spinal Cord Injury done by Johnston, Modelski, Tez, Lauer in 2001 and it's a level 2 randomized control study. This study looked at children between 5 and 13 years old with a C4 to T11 spinal cord injury classified by the American Spinal Injury Association Impairment Scale as a level A, B, or C injury. Um, the, this article looked at two types of electrical stimulation. One was just regular e-stim, and the other was functional electrical stimulation with a cycle, which I'm going to be talking to you about today. Um, with the e-stim group, they used a two-channel surface stimulation unit that they used bilaterally on the hamstrings, the quads, and the glutes and they um, created a contraction for 20 minutes per muscle group for each session. The specific parameters for that um, e-stem can be found in the article if you're interested. What I'm talking to you about today though is the functional electrical stimulation with the cycle. Um, these participants use the RT300P um, cycling unit while seated in their wheelchairs and they cycled at 50 revolutions per minute they were hooked up to functional electrical stimulation, which was at a frequency of 33 hertz, a pulse duration between 150 and 300 seconds, and an amplitude that increased automatically to 140 milliamps. Um, here you can see with April, she is hooked up how the um, electrodes should be set up. We have electrodes on the quads, down here on her hamstrings, and then on her glutes. Um, the article did not specifically say electrode placement, so I think your best bet would be to put them over the motor units of each muscle group. Um, here I have a video for you that I found on the RT300 that will give you a better idea of what this is supposed to look like. And I found this on the manufacturer's website. Now these pad placements are not with the protocol of the article I'm discussing today, but I just thought it would be nice to see what it will actually look like. Um, so we only have April set up on one side. This might be something that you could use for a partial spinal cord injury or someone who's only affected on one side of their body. Um, but since she is not a spinal cord injury and she has feeling in her lower extremities, we found it difficult to have the um, unit ramp up to the um, 140 milliamps. She found it painful, so I'm not going to activate it with her today. Um, and then there was also a passive cycling group, which was the third group, that just used the RT100 motorized cycle, which I tried to find a picture of for you, but um, was unable to do so. But it just passively moved their limbs at 50 revolutions per minute while the children sat in their wheelchairs. So the children were divided up into these three groups, either the functional electrical stem, the passive cycling, or the e-stem group, and they completed one hour sessions three times a week for six months. The children were allowed to miss up to 12 sessions over the total of the six months, but if they missed a session, they were encouraged to have um, an extra session during that week. What the article found was that the functional electrical stimulation with cycling, which we have seen here, um, increase both the volume and the stimulated strength of each of or the quadriceps um, for their muscle group, but no change was seen in the hamstrings. The electrical stimulation group saw an increase in the volume of the quadriceps, but no increase in stimulated strength, and there was no change in the control um, passive cycling group seen. So, my opinion on this article is that I think the functional electrical stimulation with cycling would be great. I think it has some great health benefits, um, getting some aerobic fitness in these children with spinal cord injuries, increasing strength, possibly helping with bone density, as well as um, pressure relief for these children. However, as you can see, I had trouble setting this up with the equipment available to me. Um, so if you don't have that RT300 system set up in your clinic, it might be difficult to repeat. Um, therefore, just doing the regular e-stim, um, again, the protocol is available in the article. I think that that might be more beneficial than doing nothing um, and more readily available in a clinic. So again, if you would like more information on the article, it is titled Muscle Changes Following Cycling and or Electrical Stimulation in Pediatric Spinal Cord Injury. And I thank you for watching this video.